We are here to talk about undergraduates' collaboration and integration of new technologies in higher education. Blurring the lines between informal and educational contexts. It's um, by Kumar Lewin Black, 2012. I'm Jay Purcell. I'm Phil Pulley. And this is our presentation for School of Teaching and Learning. And since we had the same Prezi as Tom and Kira, we thought we could uh, do the same as them too and yeah. get uh, Tina Fey here for us going on. Come on in, well. Tina. So, here we go. Tina Fey with some bad news for Jay and Phil. We had to cut your segment in favor of Tom and Kara's. Thanks for coming in and better luck next time. Okay, well, that's embarrassing. That Let's, is embarrassing. <clears throat> uh, Let's just move on, then. Tina. We'll just keep going. All right, so uh, they're looking at technology use, and what was the problem? Okay. Our problem is this. They said uh, online and digital technologies have become ubiquitous in informal environments and should therefore, they say, become an integral part of the learning environment. And so in order for that to happen, uh, we need to understand what the students are using and how they're using these technologies. Okay. So what we kind of got is their conceptual framework is this idea that the world, they say, is now a participatory culture. And they're quoting right. Jenkins, 2009, on this. And educators uh, need to give students educational experiences to prepare them for that particip participatory kind of cultural world. Right. And they didn't ever talk about Morel, but um, it, it sort of goes right in line with Ernest Morel's, what he calls the um, critical media pedagogy which we'll define for you in a little bit. The research questions, they have two of those, first of which is what new technologies do undergraduates use informally, that is for personal purposes, and for educational purposes. Yep. And um, what technologies do undergrads use to create online content informally versus educational purposes? So this is something that's interesting to me. Um, we found, not surprisingly, some of the informal or social personal uses Surprise, surprise, communication, phone, texting, um, social network, Facebook, 98.5%. Incidentally, uh, this is done at, we know only that it's a large private university and uh, they pulled everyone within the College of Education. They received back a little more than 200 responses um, via a survey. Uh, an interesting note in the article, just FYI, side note, is they said that they wanted to do further email surveys with some of the participants, but they were unable to because of uh, administrative they were, changes. Yeah, they were you, prevented from doing that for some reasons. Yeah, so that, that kind of affected their... Other research. informal uses, uh, audio and video sharing, as we know, things like YouTube or listening to uh, streaming audio and say something like Spotify. Um, and they cite on this uh, Caruso, Kivik, um, 2005, Nagler and Ebner in 2009, uh, Sanders and Schrodinger, and about half a dozen others, so we kind of ran out of space. <laughs> Educational uses of technology in higher ed. Uh, this is the formal side of things. Uh, Facebook again, yeah. almost 99% of them have a Facebook that they use informally, but only 58% rather use those for education. And they said mostly for sharing stuff with other members of their class. Yeah. The interesting one we found, and this really struck Jay, is it? Yeah, for sure. Wikis. Um, 47.5 reported using wikis informally for personal uses, almost half of them, but only 16% of them re reported using wikis for education, and for some reason, that just really struck me as funny. I mean... It, it seems exactly opposite. Totally opposite, because I've used wikis, but almost entirely for education. I mean, I wonder how these students are using wikis informally. I mean... I don't, I, I don't know. Um, differences there. One thing I want to point out is they'll we refer to this as the, the net generation or uh, um, screenagers or digital natives. They want to point out that they are not a homogenous generation. They cite Bennett, right. uh, Matown, and Kervin in 2008 and Bennett, Matown in 2010 saying we can't treat them all as being equal, equally good at or using technology. Correct. Uh, Brave New World, not just a book. By Aldous Huxley, but um, again, going back to that whole idea of participatory culture that we have um, students who are consuming and producing online content at the very same time. Again, they cite Jenkins from 2009 to support that. Okay. And then also, yeah, critical literacy. Here it comes, uh, this is an outside source, Morell and a whole slew of colleagues talking about critical lit literacy. Again, going back to that idea of students kind of being born into this generation uh, with an assumed affluence of these technologies, but but no, we need to teach them literacy skills in this digital world, how to analyze text across a range of different medium, 
uh, multi-modalities, television, film, music, internet, print media, um, even murals and posters and t-shirts. Uh, we need to teach them this, again, what Morel calls his idea of a critical media pedagogy. Okay. Uh, they also note that there are gaps between the students and the teachers, saying that the vast majority of teachers experience a gap between their teaching styles and the learning styles of their students. And it's Dr. Toledo in 2007 who stated that, and actually Dr. Kind of comes, comes to our final quote at the end here, actually, kind of some of the right. same lines here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, a book I read uh, for, for 580 uh, mm -hmm. had to do with um, transformative uses of technology, and it said schools have not been transformed by technology, uh, nor have the patterns of educational success or failure, even though they said we've been using adding technology to school for almost 30 plus, three decades going into the fourth decade, we haven't really changed the way we teach. In fact, they say we have, in fact, domesticated technology to continue doing what we always have done. Like uh, calculators and whiteboards? Right. <laughs> All right, so here's Morel, uh, 2012. Youth need education that imparts skills. They need to powerfully consume and produce new media. That's basically the, uh, the, the bones and the gist of his critical media pedagogy. Um, Toledo again, 2007, uh, the propensity to create technology-rich educational environments are all a function of exposure and interest, not age. At this, she's kind of getting the idea of digital natives, as we refer to them as opposed to digital immigrants like myself. Um, and thank goodness age isn't a factor. Right. Yeah, because if you're interested in it, I mean, there's no reason that an, an older teacher can't be just as affluent with uh, using technology in the classroom as a younger teacher. What are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm trying to say that I'm old. <laughs> you wish. Um, in December 2009, talked about for teachers to, for this to happen, we need to train teachers correctly. We need to move away from quick how-to workshops to a model of professional development that leads to systemic teaching changes. Correct. In doing so, they have five core features of what they call quality professional development. First of all, there's a subject area content focus that uh, if I'm a history teacher, I need things to show me how to do things from in a history area, in a history context. Uh, I need active learning versus passive learning. Don't sit me down in a big room with a bunch of other people and say, hey, here's how this works, good luck, uh, let me create something with it while you're showing me. Uh, there needs to be a coherence between the beliefs and practices that uh, what I'm doing needs to you know, go along with how I teach and my teaching style. Uh, very important, a duration of 20 hours over a semester, and it should be teamed by subject and grade level so that we can work together and, and learn things. As J Jensen uh, Smith and, and Lewis and Smith say, this allows teachers to learn from other educators' failures and successes over a longer period of time. I don't know if you've ever experienced any professional development that's not that way. Um, yeah, I have. Okay. Final thought comes from Ignacio Estrada. I really like this, and Phil, a, I don't know where you found this, but it's yeah. great. Uh, if a child can't learn the way we teach, maybe we should teach the way they learn. Um, what a I, concept. I've just seen this on some blogs, I, and, and you can just find it on some sites saying, you know, here's some quotes, and they throw this guy out. Uh, I haven't found any papers or anything that I can find so far, but... That would have to, like, involve getting us out of the <laughs> rut that we've been stuck in teaching right. year after year after Which, year. Which, uh, speaking of ruts, we're going to talk about that with some Roman roads and challenging you with an idea for coming up with new ways of trying things using technology in your teaching or in teaching situations. So, yeah. when we get together on Tuesday, be thinking about because... We're going to use our time instead of sharing this with you to give you time to come up with some new ideas. Yeah, and some activities and how you can sort of take what you do online socially and maybe turn it into something a little more formally for an academic instructional setting. Okay. Um, we have resources or references, right? References. Yeah. Of course. Yes. Okay. There they are. Set one. Got to hold up. References two. We'll see you on Tuesday. All right. <laughs>